Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. My name is Heather. This is uh, Welcome to Fab Fridays with Heather and Welcome to Heather's House. Um, so, just really quickly while I'm waiting for people to see that we're live, I'm just going to go ahead and get my laptop set up so I can see comments and all that kind of good stuff. perfect so I see myself now so I can be reading the comments so I'm just I don't see oh we got one person on here <laughs> so I'm just gonna wait a few more moments hi Shannon good morning and uh, just wait for a few more people to see that we're live and then we're gonna work on the second phase of the antique corner cabinet that we started together last week. And um, so, yeah, so I'll just hang out for just a moment and wait for a few people to see that we're on. Hi Kim, thanks for joining us. waiting for a few people to see that we're live so that I don't repeat myself a bunch of times talking about what we're doing. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a super awesome morning. Beautiful Friday. You guys can meet my favorite pup. <laughs> this is Sebastian. He's my cutest boy. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I suppose we'll just go ahead and get to it. Welcome, welcome everyone who's joining us and thank you so much for painting with me today. It's Fab Fridays with Heather and I'm Heather. And so today is phase two of my antique corner cabinet makeover. Hi Donna, thank you so much for joining us. And so for those of you who did uh, work on this with me last week, um, this is a custom color that I made, and um, if you didn't see it last week, you can go back and watch the replay for the exact mixing ratios and measurements to be able to recreate that. Um, we got through like one and a half coats, and, um, and so off the video, I went ahead and taped off my little windows, um, finished painting it and getting it all ready for you guys. And um, so what we're going to do today, and again, this is kind of a little bit of a beginner's level video. Hi, Gloria. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so a lot of you veteran painters, you're going to, you know, maybe not the video for you. Um, but for a lot of people who are just trying to get started um, on their shabby paints journey, this will be great. Um, because we've done our painting and today we're going to distress and seal this piece together so that you can kind of see how that's done. So I already started um, doing some distressing on the bottom. My goal for this piece is actually kind of heavy distressing because I feel like she just screams beautiful farmhouse and wants to be super shabby. So I'm really excited about that. Hello, hello everybody. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And I'll be checking the comments just to see who's here. So hello, welcome everybody. Thank you so much and we're gonna get to it. So what I have done is I have wrapped my, um, I have wrapped like a, an old sanding sponge because I feel like, I feel like these things don't work that well when you're trying to do really anything. I feel like they lose their, their grit really quickly. And then they just, hi Becky, thanks for joining us. 
And then they're just, you know, for being three bucks a piece or, or more, you know, you can't even distress half of this piece without it being all gummed up. So what I do is I have cut a piece of 150 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna wrap it around my sanding sponge so that um, I have the, the comfort of the sponge, but I actually get more use out of my sponge. And then what I have here is I have like an old cut up piece of my husband's old t-shirts. I like to kind of steal his old t-shirts and cut them into little rags and work with them. Um, so I've gotten this damp and what I like to do when I'm doing my distressing is I just, I work in small sections. Um, so we're gonna just start right here. And what I do is I'll actually wipe down the section first and this just kind of softens the paint and this will help you keep down on the dust. And so I just always distress, I'm gonna yell so you guys can hear me over the sanding. Um, I just always like to distress the natural edges um, so that it just looks like all the places that are really cool, old antique would just wear naturally. And then I go ahead and I wipe it again just to get any more of the dust residue. And then I just go and see if there's any spots that didn't quite get all the way, all the way distressed. Sometimes it's hard to get in these little tiny bits. Yeah, and so I'm just going to keep moving along my piece like this and, uh, and distress all of these natural edges really quick. And then we're going to show you how to use our amazing, ooh, Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Thank you, the color is looking really pretty. So I think you were on last week. I feel like I remember that. Um, but yeah, this is the custom color that we made together. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna keep cooking along and um, we do have Shannon on here and so she'll be helping me to answer questions. Sometimes I get in my like shabby zone and I like want to pay attention but I have that artist brain mentality thing and I'm just like la -di da so hopefully <laughs> I can pay attention but she'll probably be able to catch any questions that I'm too uh, shabbied out to, to catch and if for some reason um, I missed your question and she missed your question please just ask again so to honor your time I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go and what do what I would do while I'm working on a normal piece of furniture. And we're just gonna do it together so that if you're new to shabby paint or if you're new to painting, um, you just kind of get a feel for, you know, just some of the basics. And then these videos are gonna be getting progressively more advanced as well. Um, so we wanna make sure we're supporting everybody with these videos, so if there's something in particular you would like to see, please write it in the comments and let me know. So right now I'm gonna do this little natural edge right here. And these ones are sometimes a little bit of a pain because you have to just hold your tongue just right and use like the, the edge of your sanding sponge. And you have to try to get it so that you actually distress this part, but you don't accidentally scratch <laughs> on the other little parts. So I have some paint and a paintbrush standing by just in case I accidentally have a, an accident here while I'm trying to get this little lip. But I'm going to just go ahead and get started very carefully on it. So far, so good. keep it that way. Perfect. Looks cute. All right. Hello, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> oh, yes, 
Yes, Carrie, you were watching and you picked green. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, I'm really loving the green. I'm really liking the green. I'm glad that we decided on this. It was so hard to choose. And by the way, thank you for joining me again this week. Everyone who was uh, started this project with me, it's kind of fun that you're here again. So I love it. Thank you. Yeah, and then, you know, as I'm going along here, please let me know. Hi, Auntie. My aunt's on. She likes to watch. I love it. Um, yeah, so please just let me know if you have any specific shabby paints questions or anything um, like that, and I am trying to watch. But for now, I'm just gonna keep going with my distressing. all of the natural edges where things would already wear and what this does I'm sure most of you already know but this just brings out the it brings it to life because when everything is just painted a solid color all of the beautiful detail kind of gets washed out and that's what I love about adding a beautiful distress is that it breathes the, the, um, the character and the life back into the piece and it really makes it dimensional and very very pretty I think so, but I'm a real shabby girl at heart through and through, so it's also a style and a preference for me. I just really love the classic shabby sort of cottage farmhouse vibe. It's my thing. So as I go along, I just wipe before I distress and then I wipe again after and that just helps me to see what I've done and keep the dust down. Some of these little spots in there are a challenge. You want to distress it without accidentally scratching another part. There we go. because this piece is going to look so beautiful when it's done. So I'm kind of thinking what we're going to do is I think we're going to distress this piece together um, next, or not distress, we're going to antique it next week. Um, so I'm super excited about that. All right, let me check and see if there's any questions. Hi, Norma. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Nicole. Thank you for joining us. So again, um, we're working on my beautiful shabby corner hutch that we started last week. We are just distressing this piece together and, um, and then we're going to seal it with our shabby paints no waxing top coat. So this is matte wax and this is what we're going to be using to seal the piece and um, there's no buffing no reapplying, no waxing. It goes on in minutes. It's dry in minutes. The stuff is absolutely amazing. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining, joining us. So this is what we're going to be sealing with, and I'm going to be showing you that as soon as we get um, the rest of the distressing done, which I'm just about there. Okay. Okay. So my rag was getting a little bit clogged with... Um, Sanding dust, so I just went ahead and gave it a nice rinse. And on some of these little pieces, I always just use like the edge. That works really nice. But then again, like I was saying, you want to do it so that you don't end up scratching other parts of your piece. So you might have to go back and um, kind of reapply some paint if you've accidentally scratched somewhere other than where you were trying to distress.
I personally feel like this piece really likes a heavy distress because it's such a beautiful and super cute sort of cottagey farmhouse um, piece. So I really like the, um, the heavier distressing. Okay, so I'm gonna try to open the door without the hardware. Let me get my uh, screwdriver just a second. how to get the door back open again. Locked myself out of my beautiful cabinet here. Okay. All right. So like I said, just distressing all of the natural edges. And if you missed uh, last week's video, Go ahead and watch the replay because this is a really pretty custom color that we made and all of the, um, the colors that we used in the ratios um, are on that last video if you go ahead and watch the replay. I'm so excited to see how this piece turns out. I can't wait. I've been wanting to paint this piece for about two years, <laughs> but I get so busy doing other, making other people's houses beautiful that uh, sometimes I don't get to my own projects. Do you guys have that problem? All of you professional painters, do you make everyone else's house beautiful and not your own? <laughs> oh, hi Chantel, thank you so much for joining. Yes, I can't wait for the result as well. This is gonna be so much fun. Jumping around, getting my all my cute little windows all distressed. They're starting to look super cute. And I'm just kind of using the edge of my sanding sponge. dressings probably oh I don't know maybe five or ten minutes worth of work it's pretty easy but this is a pretty easy piece it seems big but it's just it doesn't have much going on it's mostly flat so it's a pretty easy project camera and you can actually see how cute this distressing looks. I never know what you guys are able to see until I go back and watch the replay. Let's see here. Oh, hi, Annie. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, <laughs> Shabby Shannon says her house is a hot mess. I know. It's like we make everyone else's house like super beautiful, but it's hard to get to our own. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been trying to make time for my own projects too lately, which feels really good to me. I missed that. Alright, so I'm almost done with this side here. 
here. And then I just need to finish this side here and then we can actually start our sealing process, which if you haven't seen how easy our top coats are to use, I'm gonna tell you all about how amazing, wonderful, magical, and perfect these are. <laughs> and, um, and how much they're gonna change your life. So if you don't know about our sheer or satin vax, um, I'm gonna tell you all about it and it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna show you how to use it as well. So, <laughs> all right, well, I don't see any questions, so I'm just gonna keep cooking along so we can get to our sealing process. thinking so I actually have another really really cute super large buffet that has been wanting to be painted it's actually right over here you can't see it uh, I'll show it to you guys uh, next week but um, I think maybe that'll be our next project we work on at Heather's house so you guys can stay tuned for that in the future Thank you again to everyone who's joined us and please let me know if you have any questions. Oh, hi. Oh, we have one of our new stylists who just joined us. Hi, welcome Eileen. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Today we are painting my antique corner cabinet. We actually started this piece last week and this is a custom mixed color that I made and if you go back to last week's live and watch the replay, um, you'll be able to see exactly what we mixed and how we did that and everything. So right now I'm just demonstrating for beginners, which I don't know um, how helpful it is. I don't know where people are at in their painting journey, but I'm just um, going through my personal distressing process for this piece just to, so that'll be great. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing. Hi, Jennifer. Oh, hello. Okay. All right. So let's see. We're almost, almost through with our distressing process. all distressed and shabby just the way I like them there's some more distressing that I want to do along here but for those of you who witnessed it I actually locked myself out of this piece because I took the hardware off so that I can um, paint it and my doors are stuck shut so that's my embarrassing shabby uh, confession so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get my doors back open and uh, go ahead and get my little edges distressed here before I move on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is when I do my, my ceiling, 
I'm just gonna leave my windows alone and I'm gonna seal everything else because I didn't lock myself out of these ones, thank goodness. Um, like a dork. Um, so yeah, so anyways, we're just gonna leave this alone while I get that all taken care of. And, um, and we're gonna just seal everything else is the plan. So uh, hang tight, I'm just gonna grab my little Vax um, cup. So when I do my um, my vax sealing, I really like to just use these little paper bowls because um, they work super nice. I've got a cup of water here for my vax applicator sponge, and. So what I do when I'm using um, our Vax applicator sponges is I just take a little bucket of water, I get my sponge all the way wet, and I wring it out so that it's completely rinsed out, not dripping, but it's still nice and damp. Okay, so I got all of my water out. I'm actually going to rinse my rag out one more time and just make sure I got all of the sanding dust off of my piece before I get started. And then the other thing that I like to use is I like to use a little mister from the dollar store and I'm going to use this to reactivate my vac sponge when it starts to dry out a little bit, okay? So that's pretty much all you need for your sealing process. And, um, and then of course you want to select whether you want to use matte vax or satin vax. So today I'm going to be using matte vax because matte vax is um, matte, nice and shabby, and it's gonna look really good with this cottagey farmhouse look that we have going on. Now, if this was a piece that was a little more curvy, a little more classy, wanted to have a little bit of a sheen, then I would go ahead and use our satin variety because um, that has just a little bit more of a sheen if you're looking for that kind of polished look. Hi, Loanne, thank you for joining us. Okay, let's see. Um, so my aunt wants to know um, if I'm going to paint the inside and yes, I am going to paint the inside and I actually am kind of at a loss for what to do. I know you guys can't see now, but you might remember from last week. It's just a very, very primitive wood inside. So would everyone like to share some ideas with me about what I can do with the inside and we'll do it together on camera either um, you know, one of these following weeks as we continue to work on this piece together. Just let me know what your thoughts and ideas are. I would really love to know. So I'm just making sure all of my little sanding dust and stuff is off of my piece because I don't want my matte vax to seal in any dirt or any um, you know, uh, wood, wood, um, sanding stuff. Can't think today. So I'm just making sure that that's all off before I go ahead and get started on my sealing because Vax is a very good sealer. It's amazing. So if you have anything like that on your piece, then it's going to be on it for forever because the Vax is going to seal it. So I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to make sure it's all good. Oops. Yep, okay, so I'm ready to go. I got my piece all nice and clean. I'm feeling happy about it. And I'm going to take, and I usually, so shake your product up super duper 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 good. I'm using matte vax. Oh yeah, and thanks for the ideas, you guys. Keep the ideas coming for what I can do on the inside of this piece. I was thinking, I don't know, maybe decoupage, something cute, but I would love your guys' ideas. So let me know. 
Okay, so I'm shaking up my product. And I just use like, when I'm doing a piece this size, I'll maybe put in like two little quarter size amounts. I don't know if you can see that. But I have my damp sponge here and I'm gonna work from top to bottom. So I'm gonna start at the top. And now our Vax is so amazing and awesome. So unlike a, um, well actually, hold on. I'm just gonna turn around and talk to you so I make sure that you <laughs> hear me. Um, so when you're doing sealing with our products, um, you're not trying to do like you would with wax or a poly or something like that where you're actually trying to create a layer. You're not doing that. What you're doing is you're almost like massaging this into the paint like lotion in your skin is really sort of how it feels to me. And so you're not trying to create like a layer on the top. You're not trying to do that. You're working it into the paint. And what it does is it actually bonds, it absorbs into the, like the pores of the thirsty chalk paint and it bonds with the paint and it just creates a beautiful, hard, durable finish. So you're not trying to like actually create like a thick layer. You're just massaging this into the paint kind of. It's the best way I can describe it really. And it dries in minutes and this is waterproof, UV protectant. Um, this is so beautiful. This is absolutely phenomenal for kitchen cabinet, for, well, just everything. I mean, I would never seal anything with anything other than this product right here because, not to be rude, but wax products, they have to be reapplied. They're a ton of work. And then if you ever want to repaint your piece, you have to strip and sand off all of that wax, which is absolutely crazy. If I get bored tomorrow and change my mind, I could paint right over the top of this sealer and I don't have to strip or sand anything. So it's really, really um, a, a great product and it's waterproof. So this can go on, um, you know, benches and bird houses and signs and things that go outside, which is great. So like I was telling everyone earlier, I'm leaving the windows alone because I accidentally locked myself out of this by taking off the hardware. So anyways, I don't want to um, mess with it on camera, so I'm just going to get that open later so we can continue to work on this piece next week because next week we're going to be doing um, an antiquing glaze to this piece. Just a light one, just to give it a little bit of a patina to keep it, um, you know, looking like that beautiful cottagey farmhouse um, vibe. So you guys can see how fast this is. I'm using hardly any product. The way that I like, I feel, is about like every six to eight long strokes or so, <clears throat> I'll re-dip. And when I dip, I'm literally just putting that much on my sponge, okay? And then it's like <clears throat> about every third time, I'll just um, spray my sponge with a little mist instead of rinsing it back out because um, the vax will actually build up in your sponge. And if you rinse it out, then you're wasting that. Um, so I just will give it like one squirt and that will keep my um, sponge nice and damp and it'll make my bottle of Vax last that much longer. And it already lasts a really long time, so it's a really great um, value. Okay, so. I'm sure you guys can see how quick I'm cooking along. This is absolutely amazing. So easy to use. It's going to change your life. So, I actually 
actually feel my sponge beginning to dry out now. So like I said before, just one squirt, just one squirt, all I need. I'm gonna put another, oh, I don't know, quarter sized amount or so of my Vax here in my bowl. And we're just gonna keep going. All right. And I'm just about finished with my first layer of sealer. And I always do two, two coats of Vax. Um, but I actually, I let it sit for a little bit in between. And then, um, so a full cure for our products is about um, like 72 hours to a week or so, depending on the temperature and if you're working inside or in a garage or all of that stuff. So it's dry in like less than five minutes and then it's fully cured um, in anywhere from like 72 hours to about a week or so. All right. So that was my first coat of top coat sealer in matte vax. And I'm gonna save the windows for later because of my little mishap <laughs> with the um, blocking myself out of it. So okay, I'm sure everyone would love to see me fudge around with that on camera, but I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> Oh, thanks you guys. Uh, okay, so Eileen wants to know where do you, how do you tell where you have applied the vax and where is there a wet look until it sets? Yes, there is a wet look. So you probably can't see it on camera, um, but when you're actually doing it, you'll be able to see where you've been. And, um, and on some pieces, what you'll do is it just depends on the way the light looks. So you might just have to do one of these numbers with your head <laughs> so you can just see. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to see where you've been. And then, um, you know, if by any chance you missed any little spots here or there, when you go in for your second coat, um, you'll be totally good to go. So, so my plan here is, is that um, I'm going to get my windows open and finish my distressing and um, and then I'm going to seal this and then off camera I'm going to give this one more coat of sealer and then next week um, we're actually going to do the antiquing glaze to this piece so please stay tuned next week and we will be doing that and I'm so excited so thank you everybody for joining me. Fab Fridays with Heather. Welcome to my home. So excited that you're painting this piece with me. And I hope that everybody comes and jumps on and tunes in with me next week. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna be doing the antiquing. And then also, please let me know what you think I should do to the inside. And do you guys think I should put chicken wire in here? Let me know. I'm really excited. So. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me and I'm excited to see you next Friday. Awesome. Thanks guys.